if we kind of summarize how does the upper esophageal sphincter open, um, there's two main things that have to happen. Um, the, the first thing to focus on is, is the number one in this particular slide, and that's that the whole pharyngoesophageal segment has to relax. And that primarily happens from neurologic hardwiring via the um, parasympathetic fiber of cranial nerve 9, which actually allows the sphincter to relax. So that happens usually early in the swallow response. The second thing to actually get the sphincter wide open is what I'm just going to call mechanical traction. So that the, after the sphincter relaxes, the upper esophageal sphincter is actually, has to be pulled open. Now, how is that accomplished? If we go to uh, number two, basically, as the tongue propels the bolus from the oral cavity, obviously by its connections to the hyoid bone, the hyoid bone is elevated, number three, and because of its connections to the thyroid and cricoid cartilage in the laryngeal region, the, the whole uh, laryngo complex is elevated. And that whole activity, in addition to the force and the size of the bolus itself, extends the opening of the UES. So the importance of, of this slide is that there's really two things that have to happen neurologic relaxation, but then, the bowl, but then the upper esophageal sphincter has to be actually pulled open, and that's done by the mechanical traction. So when we look at disorders, we have to look at both of these activities. Is it a relaxation problem? Is it a traction problem? Or is it perhaps a combination of the two? Mm -hmm.